Hey guys, welcome back, it's Matt here, and we've almost reached 37,000 subscribers, which is just insane, so if you haven't already, definitely do subscribe and hit the bell icon, but today we're taking a look at the top 10 Android apps of August for 2019. So I have some pretty good apps in store for you guys, and I really do hope you enjoy the video. So let's go into it. Okay, so starting off on the list, the first app up is a weather app called Shadow Weather. So this is actually made by a guy that I've been messaging on Instagram, and he's only 16 years old and he's managed to make a really great app like this. And so I thought you guys should check it out because it's genuinely one of the best weather apps I've been using. And he's adding a lot of functionality to it, um, but it's very clean. I've got the AMOLED theme on, so it does say battery, um, but it's really punchy and it's got loads of detail on it about the weather. You can see the cloud cover, humidity, precipitation chance. One of my favorite things is actually this 24 hour period uh, where it shows you hourly the different forecasts, but you can go ahead and change between temperature, pressure. Uh, you can even see what the humidity is or the dew point. So I think that's actually really, really nice. You can even go ahead and view the UV index if you want, um, but it's just really nice being able to select that and scroll through. Never really seen that in a lot of other weather apps. Something else really amazing is that it has a radar built in. So it does show you at the top that green means it's gonna be light, so light rain, cloud cover, and you can go ahead and change it between radar, viewing storms, satellite view, and overall it's just quite good in case you wanna watch out for something specific like a tropical storm, or you wanna look out for some rain coming in or something like that. But it's really nice to have that built in, and I like how you can scrub through the time as well, so you can actually go ahead and see when the rain is gonna hit. But diving in the settings, you can see there's a bunch of different unit formats. So whether you use Imperial or metric, there's a few different theme options. And there's also some quite a lot of customization options in terms of you can choose which section displays what. So you can choose whether it displays cloud cover, pressure, temperature, humidity, things like that. And you can change the order around, which is really nice. Up next is an email app that's very different to most out there. It pretty much converts your email app into like a text message app. Um, which I really do like. It simplifies it a lot, and sometimes it can be hard to have a conversation flowing on an email. So this basically adds all your different email addresses, and then all of the emails that come in, they come through as bubbles, like messages. And it reminds me of something like Facebook Messenger and Skype sort of mixed together with your email, which is really nice. So the overall app is quite clean. It has sort of an iOS vibe to me um, with the sort of bubbles. Um, but it has a built-in calendar, a section for groups, you also have a list of your contacts. And overall, I just like using the app. I think it's just really a lot nicer to use, um, especially with swiping across to delete things. Uh, that kind of reminds me of iOS. Um, but here's all my different inboxes, and obviously you can go ahead and just view all of them combined, um, but it's just a great email app. Up next is a really cool photo editor. This isn't just like your standard one that changes your light or contrast. This actually animates your photos to make them into sort of like a video. So for example, I have this plain picture right here, which I took in a town called Turunch, which is in Turkey. And basically I can go ahead and choose the cloud cover. And now if I hit play, you can see that it's animated. Now I'm not sure how it does this, but it's pretty incredible. And you can go ahead and choose the opacity, how fast the wind is blowing. And also you can change the horizontal um, width of it as well. So if you want it to be higher up above the mountains, you can go ahead and adjust that. But there's a lot of customization options in here, not just for the clouds, but you can go ahead and actually animate anything you want. And you can create a path by simply swiping in the direction you want an object to move. So I've just made the water move. And if it's not perfect, you can go ahead and, and rub things out and freeze things. And you can even add things into the picture like birds and you can change their opacity and also add butterflies or rain or sparks. And overall, it's just quite a cool app for bringing your picture alive. And something else really cool is you can add sort of like a camera shake. So it actually seems like a video. This is really impressive. I've never really seen anything as powerful as this before. There's a paid version. However, there is a lot of free options. So I would recommend just trying out the free version. Um, but if you do like it, you can pay for the pro version and there's a lot more things to unlock. But yeah, that's it. You can export it, share it on your social media apps. And it's a really great app. Up next is Storm Radar. So I know there's like two weather apps in one here, um, but this one is just dedicated purely 
for a radar, whereas the one at the start was kind of like a mix between both. But this has a lot of customization in terms of you can completely customize what the radar shows. And I find it really fluid to use. It's really accurate. And I love actually scrubbing through the time in order to find out when it's going to rain or when the cloud cover is going to be above me. So this is really useful, especially if you're planning out a trip or a day to the beach. And you can go ahead and choose in the customization options, whether it shows earthquakes, tropical storms, thunderstorms, the wind, the temperature, pressure, all that good stuff. So very, very handy. It also gives you a brief outline of the weather at the top there in that small widget. And something good is it gives you a notification to actually tell you if rain is going to begin. And also it will tell you when it's going to start. But yeah, definitely a really good app to check out. Up next is screen dimmer. So this is for the times that maybe you're sleeping next to someone or you're sleeping in a room with your friends and you don't want to disturb them with the brightness of your phone. Or even if you just want to reduce that brightness, the strain on your eyes before you sleep, this allows you to go much dimmer than the default setting does. And all you need to do is enable it, give it some accessibility privileges, and you have a few options for how to turn it on. You can allow a shake gesture, so that will actually enable it. Um, or you can just go ahead and manually turn it on and you can adjust the brightness as well as the color in here as well. So if you want some sort of blue filter to help your eyes better, you can go ahead and enable that as well. But it's basically just really good for reading in the dark if your screen is too bright. Up um, next is really good if you're at work or you're in uni or you're out and about and you can't play a voice message out loud that somebody sent you on WhatsApp. You can simply go ahead and actually convert the voice recording and transcribe it into text so you can go ahead and read it. It does support a multitude of languages and it's actually really, really useful. So for example, here, this is just something I sent, um, but I'm just going to share it with the app. So transcribe, and then it's going to go ahead and do it. It's really, really accurate and it almost gets every word perfect. So it's really, really good if someone's sending you a voice message and you just wanna go ahead and read it and give them a brief reply, you can go ahead and do that pretty easily using this app. Now it does support all the languages like I said, but it doesn't support cross language translation. It only supports transcribing in another language. Okay, so up next is an app called Split Screen Launcher. This one's really useful if you have the latest version of Android and you like to split screen because it can be kind of fiddly to open multiple apps. And if you're doing it on a daily basis, you might as well just create a shortcut. So this app basically allows you to select two apps, one which is the top half and one is the bottom half. And you can go ahead and add them to a single app icon on your home screen. So I'm just adding my browser and then I'm just gonna go and add something like Facebook, some social media, but you could pretty much add any app on here that supports split screen. Then you simply go ahead and save it, add it to your home screen, and when you click it, it will open the app drawer for a moment, but if you hit back, it will have both the apps there. So I wish it didn't have the app drawer bit, um, but it is useful just to be able to click it, and it's definitely faster than if I just do it on my own. Up next is Helpful Peeps. This is really good if you wanna help people in your area with something, or even if you wanna get help, People can submit requests and they can also submit requests with paid jobs as well. So if you want to be paid for something or pay someone to do something, you can go ahead and do that. But you can just also offer your help for free as well if they do need it. And by going to your profile page, you can view your replies, requests, and also create a new request. And you can enter how much your budget is or how much you want to be paid. And overall, it's quite useful. Second last app on the list is called Betafish. So this one is a live wallpaper and it's really good for your AMOLED devices or your devices with a very smooth interface that are pretty high spec because they're able to have 60 FPS, really good performance, and it's just really smooth and it just gives a really nice look to your home screen. It's got the super AMOLED look and it just makes everything else pop out your screen. And you know, live wallpapers use more power, but by having all of the black on the screen, you're also gonna be saving some um, by not having those pixels on. So you have a win-win situation here, but it's definitely really nice. And finally, last app on the list is very, very useful. This isn't a movie playing app, but it's something I haven't really used before. I've not really found much purpose, but with this, it's actually really useful because it shows you future movies that aren't necessarily out yet. And you can go ahead and add those to a list, which will remind you to actually go ahead and watch it. It will tell you some information about it. And also you can go ahead and leave a comment or a review if you've seen it. And if you want to go ahead and view it when it's out, it will actually link you to a bunch of online sources where you can go ahead and watch it. But you can go ahead and look at even series 
and you can swipe to show which episodes you've seen, which ones you haven't, and you can also add friends on here as well so you can see which movies they're interested in. And overall, the app is very, very nice to use. It's quite simple and it has sort of like an Instagram, Twitter vibe to it, um, which I really do like. But you can go ahead and watch your trailers in here as well. You can search for new movies and series. And I really just like it because I can remember which movies I want to watch and I can keep them in order. And when I've watched them, I can mark them down and leave a review so I can help other people decide whether it's a good movie or not. But anyway, guys, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed my video. Don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Peace out. I live inside my own world of make-believe Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities I see the world through ice-covered in